Avengers! Hello everyone and welcome back to Excelsior, a Marvel Universe podcast. I like it. We like that? Okay, okay. Keep it rolling. I'm your director, because I like that, Christian Buckley. As always, joining me is the Apex legend. You heard him already. Jack Martin, how are you? Happy, happy New Year, Jack. Excelsior, happy New Year. It is a new, new time for us, for this podcast, mm -hmm. kind of. Mm -hmm. Great to be back with you. Hope you enjoyed your break. I, I did. I hope you did as well. I'm sure there's a bit to discuss from the break uh, for the listeners. You're going to notice some changes to the show format wise in the coming weeks. This is kind of just a, a reestablishing episode, but uh, I will probably update the podcast art in the coming weeks just to mark the signal uh, where you may be falling on this show. Listener is you might have found us over the last two years focusing on being a Marvel's Avengers podcast. Now, the tea leaves have been read. Uh, Christmas just happened, so, you know, new phone, who dis, when we got a text from uh, that old Marvel's Avengers game. Uh, we'll keep tabs, but it is no longer the priority of the show. And being honest, it hasn't been for a minute, right? Like, we get it out of the way, and then it's the more interesting things in Marvel, so. Yeah, and we also haven't played the game yeah. <laughs> like extensively pretty much all of 2022 yeah like i got i finished like my platinum stuff uh early on in the year of 2022 mm -hmm. never dove into the jane stuff never got into the bucky stuff and those were kind of the big drops of last year mm -hmm. so and uh some of the like omega level threat stuff as well i think we did the mission that was like the one time we played together mm -hmm together separately yes but that was that was kind of it so i mean if if the two hosts of the marvel's avengers podcast aren't playing the game kind of kind of tells you everything you need to know about the the state of marvel's avengers for sure and we we could call audibles in the future you know uh we could sure. see what happens i'm obviously going to keep tabs on it i still ha follow the game on socials and i check in on the subreddit once in a while but um as it stands there's a big year ahead for marvel and in turn the podcast so i think it is only natural the podcast will reflect that and that's what the episode is today uh we're going through a marvel in 2023 preview from games to the mcu to the sony universe gonna have a lot to discuss before we get into any of that jack uh how was your break any notable things you did anything fun i think we talked before christmas any marvel themed christmas gifts or activities in your time off Ooh, i don't think oh you know what something is marvel related during mm -hmm. my christmas uh break i went down to uh princeton new jersey nice and there's a record exchange slash like blu-ray dvd that sort of store there uh, it's really cool mm -hmm. uh the princeton record exchange would highly recommend and Years ago, like three years ago, or how long is ago? Four years ago at this point. In 2019, I went there and I saw The Incredible Hulk on Blu-ray. Now, of course, bad movie. However, it was not a Blu-ray. As you described, Christian, it was a green ray. So instead of like the blue case of your traditional Blu-ray, because it's the Hulk, it was green. It looked kind of like an Xbox like, case. Like a gamma ray, would you say? Yes. <laughs> yes. And I like that. And... I was like, all right, this movie's bad, but the case is cool, and I just decided not to pick it up. So I went back three years later. Either that version was still there, or they got a new version. Either way, I brought it home with me. It is a great $8 purchase. I love having it. I will never crack it open to watch that movie. <laughs> but I think it's a cool little thing to have. So that that was kind of my Marvel thing this year. That's beautiful. I love that story. Uh, and I, I bet it was the same one. I really do. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> um but yeah uh, apart from that uh had uh, some great time on the switch mm -hmm. played through mario odyssey nice so that was that was kind of uh the extent of my vacation pretty uh pretty re pretty relaxing but how about yourself nice yeah i um what did i do i don't i don't think i did any marvel related stuff over break um that i can remember <laughs> you know like i was very busy uh, my girlfriend Kayla was home, so we were 
seeing some old friends, uh, had a lot of family activities over the holidays. It was a very busy two weeks. Um, you know, I've considered scheduling because, you know, it's a new year, scheduling times to play Spider-Man. I'm like, mm, is that going to be this summer? Is that going to be uh, like spring? Is that going to be fall? I don't know yet. But that's really been it. I didn't really do much Marvel stuff. Uh, last episode we recorded was our Guardians of the Galaxy one. And uh, I have higher expectations than ever for blockbusters this year because a mere two hours after we recorded that episode, I went to go see Avatar The Way of Water. Oh, yes. And uh, I fucking loved it. So Delightful little flick, huh? Yeah, dude. Oh, man. It was, it was wonderful. I, I haven't done this in so long, partly because I still mask up in a movie theater, but... I got a popcorn, I got a soda, and I took a bathroom break, Jack. I never do that for movies ever. Well, as James Cameron said, I mean, you'll be back. You can just take your your next bathroom break at a different point in the movie and, and catch what you missed. That's true. But do you want to hear a fun little anecdote about when I took the bathroom break? Sure. So I went to see it with uh, James Cameron and James Cameron Avatar's superfan Omar Nakvi, mm-hmm. who I also saw the original Avatar 2009 re-release with an IMAX in September of this year. And Mm -hmm. I did not know this at the time, but after the credits of that re-release, they showed a scene from Avatar The Way of Water. And uh, when that scene came up in the film, I was like feeling the need to pee. So I leaned over to Omar. I was like, how long is this part? And he, because he had already seen the movie like three times. And he was like, I think it's like an hour. I'm like, no, I mean like the scene. This is the scene we saw, right? And he was like, oh yeah, you're good. So I left, came back immediately when the scene transitioned. So that was pretty masterful timing on my part. And James Cameron was right. I haven't seen it again, but I will. So. Now, that I mean, that's fantastic. I'm glad that worked out. Thank you. Now, what version of the movie did you see? High frame rate? So I saw it standard def, uh, like 2D on a very wide screen at my local theater okay i think it was 21 by 9 also it was like a a very wide showing so none of like the variable frame rate sort of stuff none of it and i was still stunned it looked incredible nice i went and saw it in 3d with like all the variable frame rate and all that i loved it nice i i i wouldn't say i'm a avatar naysayer but I didn't love the first movie. Mm. However, this one, like, straight up mesmerized me at points. Mm. Like, with all the 3D, like, it kind of feels like you're in an aquarium at points, Mm -hmm. especially in the middle part of that movie. Man, really great movie. I think, like, a a big step up from the first, in my opinion. But, yeah, great, great time. Yeah, I definitely think it's better. And I do like the first one, I know. And I know, like, every single valid critique that people have about that movie and what it represents, absolutely agree with. That being said... Man can direct a fucking kick-ass action sequence. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. He's just kind of the best to ever do it. Yeah, dude. They're, oh, it's so good. And the reason I bring it up is because we have Phase 5 of the MCU to look forward to this year. And uh, my expectations for fake soundstage films that are <laughs> leaning into <laughs> the fantastical are higher than they've ever been. Um, and I'm uh, fearful of that, but we can talk about that when we hit the phase five talk. I wanted to start Jack with our Marvel preview for the year talking about games. Cause the most recent version of this podcast was focused on a specific Marvel game. Uh, but of course this year opening up to wider Marvel games and other Marvel stuff as well. Marvel games this year has one certified banger ready and rare and to go over the break. We did learn that this is going to be releasing fall of this year, Insomniac's Marvel Spider-Man 2. Where are you at with this? We haven't seen much hype levels. Let's talk everything you want to talk about Marvel's Spider-Man 2 at the top of the year. Let's do it right now. Yes, I'm very hyped for this game. Even though recently, I don't know how you feel about this, but I've kind of been... Like, the, the, the whole third-person action genre yes. has just been too much for me recently. Like, it's 
they're all the same. Yep. And I know that's kind of a genre thing, but man, it's like open world games too. Mm-hmm. That and like third person action games, like yeah, oh man. boy, I'm playing the same game over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't feel that way about Spider Man. Like even though I'm sure there are going to be a lot of elements from the first Spider Man and just from open world games in general and third person action games, something about swing around that city, man, as Spider Man. Yeah. I I'm thrilled for this game to be coming out this year. I agree with you uh, pretty heavily, right? Uh, I the, the pandemic changed me as a gamer uh, of what I like and what I'm tolerant of in games, where things that I really enjoyed pre, you know, discovering some genres and games that I didn't really have a ton of experience with before, uh, I can't stand now. Well, a lot of them being third-person action like really high budget huge polish like you can feel the dollars in this uh story third person things which playstation makes a lot of but they also make spider-man and i'm over the moon excited for spider-man and i think that is truly because it just feels fun to play like this was part of my justification for being excited for the new sonic game is that if a game just has a mechanic that feels good like, I'm all about traversal in games. I love a good traversal system. And Spider-Man's is, like, top tier. It's Spider-Man from Insomniac and, like, Tony Hawk are the two that I go back to that I can just play without having any goal and be content completely. So I, I literally did that last night. Yeah. Like, I was listening to podcasts, and Marvel Spider-Man is my go-to podcast fuck-around game. Yeah, man. Like, I, I, I'm not even doing anything. I'm just parkouring around the city and it it feels fresh every time i jump into it yeah it was my motivator to buy ps5 uh Mm -hmm. because out of their initial like first wave of games they were announcing from playstation which is typically my go-to uh gaming system didn't really speak to me much and like i said i kind of fell out with some of their franchises but spider-man was incredible and um when I think back to my time with the first Spider-Man game, I don't think it was an instance of like, I was blown away by this because it wasn't my favorite game of the year when it came out in 2018. That was Red Dead. Um, and at the time I put uh, God of War above it as well. Because I think Spider-Man is like, and let me know if you feel the same way. I think of it as like a high eight where it did a lot of things that other games have done well before It did all of them really well and great in some capacities. And then the story was predictable, but like really strong. And I think a sequel could break past all of those things, which is why I'm excited for two so much. But uh, yeah, how do you you look back on the first Spider-Man when you're getting ready for this one? Yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you there. I'd say like an eight or a nine. Um, It came out, well, I played it at a weird time because I was coming back from... um, from school Mm -hmm. and i played it like december over break so that was kind of my focus that break really enjoyed it i think it's a little too long in points sure um man i really love the length of miles morales it's it's perfect it really is and so like that comparison is just it it gets me a little bit because i think there's maybe too many like repetitive things in marvel spider-man and just, you know, that's open world games in general. But I, I feel like they really figured it out with, with Miles. Mm-hmm. I do anticipate it will probably be similar to the first game in that regard, which is fine. It's not that big a deal. But uh, I do think you're right in, in terms of the story, having the opportunity to sort of go above and beyond here. Like, we have Venom, uh, the potential for the symbiote suit uh, affecting one of the two characters, mm-hmm. or both, maybe. Um I think a lot of people have speculated like, hey, what if you're Miles and you have to fight Peter Mm -hmm. at some point? That would be interesting. Um, Just the mechanics of having two Spider-Man in this, like I said a few episodes ago, would love to just tap of a button. You're one Spider-Man, one side of the city, you switch to the other one on the other side, and you keep doing your thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if that's going to be a thing, but it it seems entirely possible, Um, and that would be... That'd be fantastic. So I feel like there's just so much potential with this Mm -hmm. as a sequel. Yeah. And I know I just kind of brought up the like 
elements of the first Spider-Man game are were predictable, but I do think there were some surprises in there that I didn't expect with like mainly the ending. Mm-hmm. Um, so with Spider-Man two, yes, everybody is saying Peter goes too far with the symbiote. You switch to Miles, you have to fight him. That would still be incredible, even if that does happen. And we've all been saying we want that to happen forever. Like that would still be one of the best moments of the year, probably. Um, yeah, I, I do still think that could be like the moment where mm-hmm. it's like, I don't want to do this, man. Yeah. And like y- even you just said, like, we all know it's coming, but man, yeah. that would be so sick. Yeah, I, I want that to happen. So bad. <laughs> um, and just the thought of fighting Spider-Man. Yeah. Oh, God. Because the first game, my favorite boss fight was, and I, I feel like this like might be a hot take out of all the Sinister Six stuff, but like my favorite fight was uh, Vulture Electro because it's an aerial mm-hmm. fight and you get to like dodge and you have to like use the the circle like web yank to just keep your momentum up. I thought that was so cool. So being able to do that against another Spider Man would be wildly fun for me. Yeah, definitely. But. Uh, yes, very, very excited for that game. It's going to be hitting fall of this year. Uh, we will be doing a replay of Spider-Man Remastered and most likely Miles as well because it's short uh, for the podcast leading up to it. So we'll have a better idea of that when the full date gets announced for Spider-Man 2. But I'd imagine like summer is probably when you're looking to that, right? So mm-hmm. Yeah, nice uh, August. Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Ooh, I'm excited. I I can't wait to see it, you know. And while we're on the topic of Insomniac, absolutely not going to release this year, but we could maybe see an update on Wolverine because that was announced, what, in 2020, I think? Yes, it was 2020. Or 2021. Okay. 2020 was, like, the the whole reveal of the console, and then next year's... Uh, I don't think they were at E3. It was like this show. No, it was like their September showcase thing that had that That's stupid five minute intro that was like live action chess pieces or something. You remember that? <laughs> kind of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's when it was. Mm-hmm. Um, I do. I like talking about the the miles length and all that. I hope just in terms of getting this game out soon, and I also just like shorter games. Mm-hmm. Would love for Wolverine to be. I guess it's the new $60 game, a nice shorter, you know, eight to 10 hour experience or even less than that. Yeah. Linear, maybe whatever it ends up being um, just to really get that game out. Because, man, if we get Spider-Man in 2023 and Wolverine in like 2024, that would be something. I'm not sure if that's possible. I'm not sure like the scope or scale of Wolverine, but mm-hmm. that would be something. Yeah, I I am excited to see that Wolverine game. I'm sure it's going to be like Logan Last of Us vibes. So I think that would probably lend itself well to a shorter length, like you're saying. Um, Most of my beef with some of the modern uh, like linear story games are that they do run too long. Like that's one of my complaints about Last of Us Part 2 and Uncharted 4, which like they're really well made games, but they could have been a little bit shorter. And I think Insomniac outside of spider-man when i look look at like ratchet and clank games uh miles which was a spinoff they do tend on the shorter side you know so i i think if they believe that that could help their game and help their story be strong i'm sure they'll probably go for it so Mm -hmm. fingers crossed um do you think because I, I did see some speculation about this even after the fall window was announced do you think spider-man 100 percent hits this year I'm I'm confident that it comes out this year. I yeah. am too. Uh, like, of course, it could be delayed, and it's really hard to speculate on that now, especially since we haven't even seen the game really. Mm-hmm. Just that one trailer. Um, so, I mean, I expect we'll see more in the summer, like if PlayStation wants to do another June showcase or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of confident that it will come out. Yeah, I am too, mainly because I'm pretty sure the team that's making Spider-Man 2 did not make another game before Spider-Man 2 since Spider-Man. Like, I think the Mm. Ratchet team is separate and the Miles team. I think Insomniac has, like, three teams. Um, So I imagine this one, like, with the COVID happening in between these releases, they could probably have taken as much time as they needed. So Mm. um, I feel good about hitting this year personally. So Same. 
Uh, and we do have other Marvel uh, games that are ongoing, getting updates like Avengers, Marvel Snap, Midnight Suns. So if there's anything major in the games we're playing throughout this year that get some updates, I'm sure there will be some things to cover there. Uh, have you sworn off Marvel Snap in the new year, Jack? Is that your resolution from your very <laughs> minimal addiction you had? No, I ha- you see, I don't think I've played any longer than i did since we last talked so Mm -hmm. like i've played maybe one to two hours of the game it never really hooked me and i'm kind of glad about that so i'm just gonna let it lie as is smart but when it hits the playstation and has a platinum trophy then what (laughs) then then it got it's gonna get me going probably Mm -hmm. it's unfortunate speaking of playstation Sony has their own Marvel Universe that we should talk about for 2023. Uh, Let's start with the thing that's out soonest, continuing with the Spider-Man trend. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, the sequel to the wonderful Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, is releasing June 2nd of this year. We've gotten uh, some looks at it. We've seen a trailer. Anything changed since the last time we talked about Across the Spider-Verse? Well, I think if we're... Looking ahead to 2023, this is probably my favorite thing or Mm -hmm. my most anticipated thing on this list. It's up there with Spider-Man 2. Those probably might be tied. But yeah, this is kind of the movie I'm I'm really looking forward to. And now that we're in January, man, that is so close. I know it's very soon. And I think out of this list, and obviously we haven't talked about any of the MCU stuff yet, but I do think uh, Across the Spider-Verse is positioned to be the highest quality item on this list uh, because Into the Spider-Verse is arguably the greatest Marvel movie ever made. (laughs) Um, And I think Across the Spider-Verse, it is... It's that movie's game to lose this year in terms of being the best Marvel movie uh, because I think that there are some interesting things that could be really solid, but like this one will probably be nominated for awards in the following awards season, and I can't say that about anything else this year. No. Um, And I guess one thing that we haven't really talked about with this is I'm interested to see how this acts as kind of like a part one. Yeah, that's a good point. I think they've ditched that they did but it it seems like it's gonna be like the infinity war and endgame situation um so yeah interested to see how like the story leaves off because everything was like so wrapped up nicely in the first movie and it seems like this story is is gonna have ripple effects to the next movie Mm -hmm. so that'll be kind of fascinating to see like are we gonna end on a cliffhanger that sort of deal that's a very good point, and I uh, am curious because I feel like that's become a trend now where it's like part one and part two, and then when we get closer to it releasing, they're like, actually, never mind. It's just it's just something else, <laughs> but yeah, like that DNA is there, you know, and full circle, James Cameron's Avatar, uh, The Way of Water is essentially half of the story he planned for Avatar 2, so Avatar 3 is the other part of what we witnessed in the way of water so damn wild stuff but yeah i'm excited for this i can't wait i can't wait for all the cameos and uh catching up with peter b and gwen and miles so also from sony this year the continuation of the sony cinematic spider-man universe i don't think there's an official name for it is there there probably is but i'm forgetting because it's not catchy the Venom and Morbius verse uh, is continuing this year with Craven the Hunter starring a- Aaron Taylor Johnson. That's coming out October 3rd uh, and is directed by J.C. Shandor, who directed A Most Violent Year, which I don't know if you ever saw that. That was the Oscar Isaac, Jessica Chastain film from like 2014, 2015. No, I never saw that. It was good. I, that was like one of the first things I saw him in. And I was like, okay. damn, this guy. He's good. All right, cool. So we have our opinions about the uh, the Venom verse, right? We mm-hmm. never saw Morbius. <laughs> no, the track the track record with a live action Sony verse is not great. Mm-hmm. Not great. 
And this <laughs> this movie actually coming out in October. Haven't seen anything about this. I think they filmed it. I feel like I remember seeing a photo of Aaron Taylor Johnson on set for this. Um, which I'm a fan of him. I like most of the things I've seen him in. I think he's a good actor. Mm-hmm. And the idea of him playing Craven the Hunter, who I admittedly don't know much about outside of reading Craven's Lost Hunt, and he popped up in another comic I read one time. Uh, and I think he was in the Spider-Man 3 game. Um, he was in the uh, the comic we read, Spider-Man Life Story. He was, yeah. That was, tr- that was true. Um, I am optimistic, because I have fun. I've... I have a soft spot in my heart for those Venom movies and seeing Aaron Taylor Johnson play Craven the Hunter, just this out of his mind, big game hunter trying to kill a superhero. Maybe like sounds like it could be cool if it's like turn your brain off, you know? Yeah, no, totally. I I would like to see a trailer for this. Yeah. Or really anything for this movie. If it does come out in October, I like having that shorter, marketing window i suppose Mm -hmm. because like usually you know sometimes it starts like a year in advance so knowing like practically nothing about it um Mm -hmm. in january like i'm sure it'll be like a month or two at the very least until we even hear more about the movie um so that's that's kind of where i'm at right now but yeah right now we don't really know anything about it yeah all that we have here i looked it up on google and i'm getting some some quick little quick hits about it it's an action adventure film uh it's releasing october 6th not october 3rd so wikipedia was wrong earlier Hmm. uh the synopsis is as follows russian immigrant sergey kravenov is on a mission to prove that he is the greatest hunter in the world that's it russell crowe is in it apparently okay so we're definitely getting a fake I know. Uh, yes. Eastern European accent again from Aaron <laughs> again, Taylor you're Johnson. Right. Oh my god, I forgot. They, oh. The director and you know Sony saw him in the MCU. It was like, man, this we guy. have a role for you. <laughs> uh, no, because the thing is, when I when I read uh, like Russian immigrant, I was like, oh god, he's gonna do the fuck uh, the yeah. a voice, dude. He already nailed it. You're right. He did. You didn't see that coming, did you? Oh man. Remember when Wanda just loses her accent over time? Yeah, how about we expedite that process for Craven? You know, I'm waiting for Yelena to do that. Yeah, because I don't like Florence Pugh's accent. Yeah, she 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 could just use her normal voice. You know, yeah, just be. You know British. she's British. Yeah, <laughs> I found that out recently. Really? Because <laughs> she doesn't play a British person ever in any movie. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. She's either, you know, fake Russian or fake American. Yeah. So that is the Sony verse for the year. Um, Interesting moves. I am excited for both of these for different reasons on different levels. (laughs) Do you think uh, do you think Morbius 2 gets announced this year? Uh, If it does. I'll watch the first one. (laughs) Okay. because I don't think it's going to get announced is my point. (laughs) I also don't think it's going to get announced. Oh, boy. Well, I watched the uh, end credit scene again. Mm-hmm. Man, that has to be the, one of the worst things ever committed to film. <laughs> Probably. It's really bad. Yeah, man. It's poor Michael Keaton. He can't catch a break, can he? No. Oh, man. Remember they were going to make a Batman Beyond movie with him? Yeah. Oh, that made sad. me really sad. Yeah, I'm too sad about it. Speaking of being sad, MCU Phase 5. We're getting some finales to some trilogies this year. Starting out next month, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Can you believe it's next month, Jack? No, that kind of snuck up. Yeah. I'm glad I'm glad we have some time between... What was the last MCU thing? Uh, I guess the, the holiday special? Holiday special and then Wakanda Forever before that. Yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm glad we have, like, a bit of a break, even though it's not really that big a one. It's nice to kind of just sit without the MCU for a little bit. Yeah, which ties back to what I was saying earlier of, like, my bar is much higher now for a CG blockbuster. 
because the the MCU is at a point with me where I'm looking at it the same way you were talking about your triple A action games earlier, where it's like, I cannot deny the level of quality that is here and present, but I am a little sick of it, <laughs> you know? Sure. It's um, like having too much. Yeah, which was great because when I was looking at this earlier, I was like, wow, there's only three movies this year. That's actually kind of exciting. And then I was like, well, well there's like seven shows. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, Quantumania, though, I like the Ant-Man movies. I do, too. So uh, I don't really I'm kind of feeling indifferent about this one right now, um, even with Kang being introduced in this. I'm just kind of like. Yeah, I'll probably see it opening weekend. I'm not like feeling the huge urge and rush to see it. Um, but do you think this is going to be the last Ant Man movie? Uh, no, I don't think it will be. Mm -hmm. I don't think it will be. Um, I really liked Ant Man and the Wasp. Mm -hmm. Like, really like that movie, even though it's like somewhere in the middle of my MC rankings. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoy that movie. I think it's a ball of fun, and I kind of wanted this movie to be similar to that but yeah. with the kang stuff it seems like they're trying to insert a lot of like importance with this particular movie so i'm i'm curious to see how that shakes out because i think most people go to see an ant-man movie to just kind of you know laugh at like paul rudd's little antics mm -hmm. nah. little uh, yeah see his I'm little ants <laughs> sure no, I agree with you um i'm not like worried about it for introducing drama but i do think it is that like it's gonna have that marvel level intimidation where you have scott making a quip or like i just peed myself after uh kang says something right mm -hmm. so i'm curious to see how the handles introduction it seems like he's the main villain i know there was like some funko thing with a modok so apparently modok is in this but yeah, I, rem I remember that yeah um and it's uh isn't it uh, the dude from the first Ant-Man movie? Is it, is it Corey Stoll? Oh, my God. Yeah, that's who it is. That, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Sorry if you repressed that from when we talked about it. I, I think I did. Oh, my God. That's, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But imagine him with a big old head. <sighs> oh, man. Okay. I mean, I like the Ant-Man movies. It's just this one, it's got a weird vibe right now. Sure. No, I get it. So, hoping for the best. Excited to see Jonathan Majors again. But what I think is my most excited for the year, like you said, with the, uh, Across the Spider-Verse, is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, another trilogy ender that is releasing May 3rd, 2023, the final, I assume final, James Gunn Marvel film, uh, now that he's over running in DC. We have a trailer so far. Dave Batista has been saying some things about moving on from the Guardians. So where are you at with this one? I'm also very excited. This is this is somewhere high in my excitement level for for 2023 for Marvel, Marvel stuff. I love the May release date. I think I think all the Guardians movies have been in that May slot, right? Or at least in that springtime. The first one was August. The second oh, one was okay. May. Okay, okay. So, like, you know, the the sun is shining. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think of when I see the Guardians movie. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is... I'm really excited for it. I'm nervous about the fate of characters. Mm -hmm. These are all characters I kind of just want to watch them walk off into the sunset. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's going to happen for everyone. So, that's a little that's a little sad to think about. But this will be a really good one, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm sure tears will flow with this one. I'm glad that they're getting an ending. I'm sure a version of the Guardians of the Galaxy will continue after this uh, with maybe Adam Warlock or whoever else from the Cosmic Verse they want to throw in here. But I imagine most, if not all, of the current lineup roster will either be killed off or walk off. So, mm. And I think that's fitting. I, th I really do. I think that's the best move for them no i agree definitely and uh how many years in the making is this movie like a decade <laughs> or oh this one specifically yeah because i mean for in terms of the mcu this is like a really long distance between you know 2017 
and now 2023, of course, mm-hmm. with all the James Gunn stuff going on, and I think 2018, like, losing his job, then Marvel be, and Disney being like, oh, whoops, uh, we'll bring you back, and he's like, okay, let me just go make a bunch of DC stuff, and then I'll come back. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of wild to think about. Yeah, it, it, it is nuts. Uh, I hope... And I feel that it will be pretty likely that I walk away from this with the Guardians trilogy being my favorite trilogy mm-hmm. in the MCU because volume one and two are like my two, like one of, or if not both, my top two uh, favorites of the MCU. So I think if this one's even like top five potential, that's like a really strong trilogy, I think. Mm. Yeah, for sure. But another one I'm curious about and excited about i think more than ant-man currently despite liking the last two ant-man movies more than the first one of these uh the marvels the captain marvel sequel yeah july and, 28th yeah and sequel to uh wandavision in a sense and ms marvel and ms marvel yeah mm-hmm. this is an interesting one because i don't love brie larson as ms marvel yet I don't really think there's been too much for her to to do in the MCU quite yet. So and b- but I really did like uh, Monica and um, Ms. Marvel and their respective shows. Mm-hmm. So I would love to just see that team up dynamic and like to sort of uplift, I think, um, Ms. Marvel as a character. I think just having people to sort of riff off of will probably go a long way in that. Yeah, I'm excited to see this cast together specifically because of what we know about the, um, you know, the parasocial relationship that exists between uh, Kamala and Carol currently. So seeing that sort of play out is probably going to be very charming and fun. But yeah, these are going to be three absurdly powerful heroes teaming up, meeting, presumably dealing with a very large threat. Uh, so I'm excited to see what that is. I think there was a rumor at one point that this was like a musical, which oh, hmm. if it, it, dude, you know, it'd be really cool. Actually. What's up? You know how Ms. Marvel, the series was like very stylized. Yeah. What if this film is like full blown Scott Pilgrim and like the fantastical element is like, because we're looking at it through Kamala's perspective. Oh, that'd be great. That could maybe be one of the best Marvel movies if they land that, <laughs> right? That, that was such a great element in Ms. Marvel. Yeah, so it was. Be so great to see that again. Yeah. Plus, it makes sense, you know, like mm-hmm. uh, having that whimsy and shifting away from Captain Marvel to the Marvels and having Ms. Marvel be recent. Like, very, very excited and curious about that one. So, Agreed. Those are the three movies for the year. Uh, I would be surprised if they shadow drop a reveal for a movie in the fall. No, yeah, I think that's that's kind of what we're getting. But that is interesting though. Mm-hmm. Like it's I wouldn't say it's top heavy, but like July is the end of the MCU movie slate. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um I agree cuz it's been a while since it's been that way. Um I think maybe this year the fall would have had Blade should things have not fallen apart with that movie three times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So maybe that explains it, but uh, there, who's to say there could be another special presentation later in the year, right? That we could have a little short film for the MCU drop um, with the fall season. I would certainly take like a... Honestly, if you want to introduce Blade with a special presentation, 40-minute all-killer vampire thing, sure, drop that yeah. in October, please. All, all about it. Uh, but we won't know what the MCU has in store until later, probably summerish. we'll learn what the lineup is for the rest of the year. That being said, there are a few things we know are dated, confirmed for 2023, uh, recently, there was like some Disney Plus Japan listing that confirmed three of these projects to be releasing this year. Uh, so we'll start out here. Uh, currently lined up for spring 2023, we have Secret Invasion, the Nick Fury show with Samuel L. Jackson, 
Ben Mendelsohn's Talos returning. Uh, I'm really excited for this one. This is one of my like reasons to be excited about Marvel this year, I think. Yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic about this one. Because like, I'm going in with the expectation that I don't think this is going to be like the big bombastic secret invasion that people may expect it to be like from the comics and all that but Mm -hmm. i'm excited at least for the like spy espionage vibes that the show i'm sure is going to tackle so in that respect i'm looking forward to it yeah i'm really excited to see nick fury center stage and having it framed around him and how he sees the world because i feel like we haven't gotten that before we've seen like an outside perspective of that and Really, I feel like the only time we've seen him on like a firsthand account of him experiencing something was when he was getting assaulted by the Winter Soldier on the highway mm-hmm. or the wherever in Washington, right? With the the Bucky like slow sidestep thing. So I think framing the show around him and how he analyzes things could be really interesting. I'm hoping that's what they go for. But yeah, I haven't read the Secret Invasion comic run but from everything you tell me like i am expecting it to be nothing like that i'm expecting some scrolls or some government people which triggers something that we'll see in a like the thunderbolts or something i don't know yeah i I think the highest level of like scroll invasion is like sharon carter sure oh my god i'd feel so bad if they did something with (laughs) yeah like tv show characters yeah is is i think what they're kind of limited to I, yeah, I think so. Which, is, like, it's fine. Tell your story. But I don't think it's going to be... And, you know, it doesn't have to be this big, like, oh, Iron Man was a scroll. <laughs> like, that would be dumb. But, you know, Thor or, like, any, like, big... I don't think it's really going to change the fabric of the M- the MCU, really, at all. Yeah, I'm with you. It would be cool if it did, but I think it's just going to be a cool spy show. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we do know... Another game, or sorry, not game, another project releasing this year. Loki Season 2, Summer 2023. Uh, Feeling good about this one. Me too. I think Loki was one of the better MCU shows in the past few years. And I'd like to see that dynamic again of Loki and Owen Wilson's character, some of the other TVA stuff. I think some of the like promotional images that they've shown already look pretty interesting. So yeah, th- I mean, it, w- it was a really fun time, I think, um, for season one. So season two uh, has me looking, has me pretty interested. Yeah, I, I want to rewatch Loki because I remember at the time thinking that it was like a really good balance of what WandaVision did well without having any of its problems. And as we've gotten away from it, I feel like I've kind of just like cooled off on it. But I, I feel like it's objectively probably one of the better ones, right? Like top three pretty easily. Yeah. Show yeah, I, I think it has its own style that's unique from the rest of the Disney Plus shows. I think the writing is pretty superb throughout. Um, yeah, I think it like it kind of stands alone from, I'd say, most of the Disney Plus shows. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, it's pretty successful in that regard. So definitely hyped about season two. Me too. Looking forward to seeing what Sylvie's up to where she is in the, the multiverse. And the, I, I just love the color palette of that show, dude. Like the, yeah. the yellows and stuff. Oh, it looks, it's so good. Yes, absolutely. Lastly, confirmed for 2023, late 2023, Ironheart, Riri Williams picking up where we left off of her exploring her fleshing her out presumably to lead up to armor wars whenever that drops um how are you feeling about this one um i feel a bit ambivalent to it i guess i i don't think i really fell in love with their character in wakanda forever quite yet so I'm, i mean i guess i'm interested to learn more about her if it's in cambridge that'd be cool yeah i want to see more of uh massachusetts um but yeah i it, it's kind of one of those like i i'm not super excited about it but we'll definitely watch it when it comes out but what about you did you end up seeing wakanda forever you're supposed to me jack i never got around to it <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm so sorry wow 
Uh, it's, I mean, Disney Plus, February, I think. I know. So here's the thing. I, I'm excited for it. I'm very glad it turned out to actually be good. The trailers were amazing. Uh, I had a very busy fall. <laughs> I did make time to watch Avatar, but uh, my my thinking was like a month passed after Wakanda Forever came out and was like, I was thinking back to like Multiverse of Madness and like Shang-Chi. I was like, it's got to be out on Disney Plus in like a week at this point, right? Yep. I thought at the at the latest, I would have been able to watch it from the comfort of my home this week. And then two days ago, they're like, February. I was like, oh, my God, I, I fucked up. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it I think it's a good movie, but it's not not great. It's certainly not up to the quality of the original Black Panther, in my opinion, which I mm-hmm. think is still like one of the great MCU projects. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. And I think uh, Riri Williams is a really cool character from what I know in the comics. And seeing her inherit the Iron Man legacy in these movies is going to be cool to watch um, whenever it happens, presumably in her show. But there's a few other things that have been previously dated for 2023 that we have yet to get a stronger window or a reconfirmation on. Uh, First up, what if season two... What if the show was good? What if they use these resources on making that Spider-Man show that might be canceled? (laughs) (laughs) True. Um, I feel like this has the potential to win most improved. You know, that award they give in, in like high school sports or whatever. I feel like that is what if, because I did not walk away positively from the first season of what if. Yeah. I I think it's at the bottom of my MCU ranking. I'm yeah, kidding. I kind of don't like it. <laughs> it's not great. Actively. Like, talk about wasted potential, dude. That's the mm-hmm. thing, right? You can do literally anything. And I know this is not fair, probably, because it's not what they were going for with this. But when you look at something like Star Wars Visions, which is essentially, hey, what if we told this? And it looks so visually distinct with every project to fit the story they're telling. It makes something like this look worse to me. Um, so, I mean, my, the coolest episode of what if to me was T'Challa Star Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second coolest was Marvel zombies. And that one kind of felt like a a test and it was because we're getting a Marvel zombies show. Mm -hmm. I'm more excited for that than what if, and I don't know when that's coming. I agree. It, it feels like they walked into the entire Marvel section of the Lego store, but they only chose to use the stuff from the MCU. Like, you mm. could have used you could have used the X-Men. You could have used all of these things. Maybe you couldn't. I don't know about licensing stuff. <laughs> yeah, but you could have, like, done so many different things, and they decided to, like, use characters from all the episodes and build it into a thing at the very end of the season, which... I didn't care about it would have been so much more interesting if they if each like visions I think is a really good example of just making each episode stand alone and have a really solid premise and some of them were but some Mm -hmm. of them were just like what if this thing from the MCU happened but like kind of slightly differently and that I don't think is very interesting yeah and I do think it's cool to like see how drastically different something could be with the tiniest altercation right like i i think seeing uh what they did with dr strange was very interesting to me i didn't love the episode but i was like wow this tiny thing was different and then he became an evil man um but that's like half of the episodes they did you know where Mm -hmm. that slight adjustment so i was like boring because it was like the same sort of notes we hit and i think the project overall like you said when you look back at it You could have done anything, and you essentially told a micro phase of the MCU. Right. That's so boring. (laughs) You could do anything. It's like, what if we replicated phase one, but with a, like, structurally, but with 20 minute episodes? I was like, that's what you wanted to do with this? Okay. Yeah. And I'm not super positive about or optimistic about season two like i kind of feel like it's just gonna follow a similar format yeah same 
I would love for them to just do what we were talking about and just completely use all the resources and and things at their disposal. But I don't know. I kind of feel like I feel like we'll even get like follow ups to those. That's episodes. what I was just gonna say. I don't know if there's any like episode confirmations yet, but I'm expecting this to be like what if Captain Carter kept on fighting after that last episode? It's like, all right, man. <laughs> like, I think yeah. I'm good. I'm I'm with you. So I do hope they they expand. Yeah. That's kind of my if, hope for this. If not, we'll try again with Marvel Zombies. We'll see if that's going to turn out good. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, other animation projects, though. X-Men 97 is currently, last we talked, and last we heard about it, set for fall of this year. Uh I don't think either of us have experience with the original X-Men animated series, but there's a lot of hype around this one. Yeah, I'll I'll probably check out the original run before Mm -hmm. this. I'm sure it's not good. (laughs) I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I I know we've talked about this before, but I day one of Disney Plus releasing, the first thing I did was go to the um, Spider-Man animated series from the 90s because I had only realistically seen probably like 10 episodes in my life because that was airing before i was born i think um but i like the vibe of it with spider-man and i think spider-man maybe i'm just like oblivious to it because i've been exposed to spider-man stuff in so many different avenues forever but the camp felt like it was part of it you know x-men seems like i have to watch it in like a closet so nobody sees that what i'm looking at <laughs> you know like when i look sure. at that show yeah like the frame photo meme like yeah it's probably that, really yeah. serious in the, in the context of that episode yeah and it, i can tell you exactly how it sounds like the music cue in yeah. that moment mm-hmm. <laughs> like i don't know but it's cool that there's an x-men thing official that's coming out this year from modern day marvel studios that's fun yeah just the fact that that exists and like is a follow-up to the beloved 90s show Mm-hmm. is really cool yeah I'll, I'll probably watch the first couple episodes see how i feel mm-hmm. then most likely drop it <laughs> but sure uh two other projects have been talked about for 2023 so far echo the spinoff of the hawkeye series which speaking of jeremy renner glad he's doing all right <laughs> Yes, that was really scary over the break, but yeah, yeah seems seems like he's uh, in stable condition now. Yeah, but Echo, how was Echo in a couple episodes of that show? Yeah, she was there. I think starting in episode three to the that end. That sounds right. That sounds right. Um, this is going to be allegedly dealing with some Kingpin stuff. Uh, I think Charlie Cox is rumored to be appearing in the show. And it's going to be expanding on Echo. So I don't have a huge touchstone outside of being introduced to her through Hawkeye. And I liked her in that show. So, yeah, she was great um, for the most part. I, I feel like the the stuff with Kingpin at the end was a little silly. Um, yeah. But I'm sure this will flesh this out more. And also being like a daredevil tangential character is cool. Um and really important for representation too. So, mm-hmm. yeah, this is this this will be a good show, I think. I agree. I think it could be the most surprising sure. of the year. Mm-hmm. So, lastly, the show with multiple names, currently known as Agatha Coven of Chaos, late twenty twenty three. Ooh, do you think this will be like like instead of WandaVision? which is definitely supposed to be a October show. Do you think we'll get that for here? Like it has to be, this has to be like the Wednesday of next year or this year. That is a good call. And I am ashamed that I didn't realize Marvel needed a October thing again this year. Cause they clearly have it with this. You're right. They got it. This, this has to be. Yeah. If not throughout October, the first episode is coming out like, week of halloween and then it's gonna run through the rest of the year probably yeah yeah that makes sense um i'm excited for this i really like katherine hahn uh i'm curious to see what tone they take post wandavision because i think wandavision has some really uh great humor from her when she was like acting in the sitcom so 
interested to see the approach they take with this, but do you think uh, we get any update on the status of the Scarlet Witch in this? Do we get a surprise Lizzie Olsen appearance? Uh, we, I think we could. I definitely think we could. Um, Post credits, maybe? Yeah, maybe. She can't be dead, man. No, can't be dead. yeah. And I kind of don't like how they ended it like she was. Yeah. <laughs> like, Sam Raimi directed that. We could have got a hand popping up through the rubble <laughs> yeah, cool. in the end credits. Um, that's fine. Yeah, so I, I think it's it's entirely possible. Um, did you see that Deborah Jo Rupp got a recast in this? Or oh, not, really? not recast. She's she's reappearing in this show. That's exciting. Yeah. So we'll, we'll probably see more, you know, similar uh, mm-hmm. Westview people. Yeah, which I think would track, right? Because isn't Agatha stuck there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I bet the post credits because they absolutely leave that door open at the end of WandaVision with Agatha and Wanda. I bet the post credits is Wanda like limping through the door after being crushed by rocks being like, I need help. Sure. (laughs) You're free. Help me. Yeah. Do you think the show is like she's under like the hex for or maybe like with Wanda's supposed death, she the hex breaks loose on her and then she's like back to normal. Mm-hmm. I'm curious like how they're going to handle that yeah i'm curious about that too i think it could be interesting i think what's likely because i think there were rumors that they were filming something in massachusetts for the show um i could be misremembering but i think it's a good chance that current day agatha what if it's like an inside out scenario where oh agatha in her right mind is like portrayed as being stuck inside the mind of hexed Agatha and maybe reflecting on past things in her life, like maybe some Salem flashbacks or whatever. Sure. I could see something like that. And then at the end she breaks out and it's her again. Yeah. I don't know. More like a mm, anthology. Anthology is probably not the right term, but like each episode is kind of, you know, it's often in its own timeline because she's been around a while yeah because the original title was house of harkness so i was thinking it would probably be about her history mm, um yeah. covenant of chaos yeah. house of harkness. uh covenant of chaos i think could also be her history of like relationships she's had with other witches but um yeah i'm curious about this one hopeful so i hope it's october i think that set the expectation for me what you said there so yeah and i definitely want to rewatch wandavision around that time yeah i think that's the right call that's a good move great show great show that is marvel in 2023 uh barring anything we might have forgotten in this recap let us know if not let us know what you're excited about jack out of this list uh we kind of both gave our clear answers but the Spider-Man projects and Guardians seem like the front runners for both of us. Yeah, I'd say for games, Spider-Man 2. For the Sony stuff, it would absolutely be Across the Spider-Verse, and that's my uh-huh. favorite probably of anything. And then for for Phase 5, like MCU stuff, it's, it's probably Guardians. Yeah, I'll co-sign that 100%. I am in the same boat. I'm curious about Craven, though. I, I truly am. <laughs> Yeah, certainly a wild card. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not optimistic about it, given the recent Sony live-action movies. But it will be something. It will be something I go to the theater and and think about, Hell either yeah. positively or negatively. That yeah. is a fact. Well, Jack, until then, we have a long road ahead with Marvel this year. But where can the agents of Excelsior find you? You can follow me on Twitter at fascinated jack what about you christian you can follow me on twitter and tiktok at chun 2 d2 you can find the show premiering on youtube youtube.com slash joy clicks every weekend for new episodes of the show and the excelsior playlist you can also check us out on podcast services like apple Podcasts, spotify google play anywhere you listen to podcasts writing and reviewing reviewing is a free way to help the show if you can just a quick tap of the five star button or leaving a little blurb 
is appreciated and 100% free. If you want to help us out further, you can go to patreon.com slash joyclicks at the one and five dollar tiers. Five bucks will give you producer credit on every show we produce. So thank you very much to everybody. Happy New Year. Hope you all enjoy, had a safe holiday, and are excited about the coming year of Marvel. But until then, Excelsior. Excelsior. Excelsior.